Today is probably Saturday, April 21st, because yesterday we announced that AMD is uh, unveiling a faster optimized second gen Ryzen 7 and Ryzen Zen Plus processor. So you should go check out that video if you're interested in uh, the faster CPUs and all sorts of fun things. We've got this article from Hot Hardware, which is uh, the press release before the embargo lift, which talks about the processors and their their price releases and or the the press release for the processor prices. Well, that's, that's a tongue twister. That is quite the, it's a lot of alliteration <laughs> for one sentence. We've got a, they've, they've improved some things. It's a different lithography process. It's an incremental improvement. It's not, you know, a dramatic change. It's nice to see the turbo clocks inching up. Yeah. Because that was one of the big drawbacks of the Zen chips. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, things are looking up for AMD. Things are probably looking up for, for AMD stockholders, I imagine. So, woohoo! Definitely check that out. A lot of separate coverage for that. It's going to be amazing. This was uh, this was kind of leaked last week, but there wasn't really any good stories about it. So, but Intel is developing a discrete GPU called Arctic Sound. Arctic Sound. That sounds like a jazz alternative fusion band in a college town near you. Arctic Sound. I think that Arctic Sound is like the exact opposite of a graphics card because graphics cards are insanely hot and they have nothing to do with sound. Yeah, but they do yeah. like to name coolers, you know, like the cold word, like Arctic and stuff like that, hmm. you know, like deep cool. And so I can see that, you know, putting in the consumer, it's like, oh, yeah, that card's going to be really good with cooling. It's not going to be as hot because it's Arctic. <laughs> and so, of course, Raja Koduri is working on this. Raja uh, was poached, maybe, or maybe voluntarily. Uh, he used to be with AMD. He worked on Vega and a lot of other things. He gets sort of a high profile, he's sort of sort of has the rock star mentality, even though he's an engineer. Uh, and uh, he's at Intel now from a from AMD. And so it's like apparently Raja is redefining Arctic Sound. It's originally planned for video streaming apps in the data center, but now it's being split into the video streaming stuff and gaming. Turns out that video uh, data centers really, really want a lot of video processing for a lot of things. It's easy to imagine companies like Netflix, whose main business is video, would benefit from video acceleration hardware in the enterprise. But it remains to be seen. There's some interesting info at Hot Hardware. You should check that out if you're interested in learning more about Arctic Sand and the... Arctic Sand? Sand. Sand Arctic Sound. That's and just the, called snow. And the smooth bass lines. Because it's a band. It's not a band. The new iOS update killed touch functionality on iPhone 8's, uh, 8's repaired with aftermarket screens. So it's like, oh, you're not running a genuine screen. Let's make it not work. Now you think that might be a mistake, but that that's... Completely, 100% intentional. Yeah. They did it to the 7s, and they they went back on that. They enabled them again with a, you know, it's like, oops, did we destroy your aftermarket screen? Oh, I totally didn't mean to do that. Oops. Let us fix those. But now they've done it again. You really have to wonder. <laughs> I like oh, yeah, this, they've got a gif here. I like this quote from, uh, it was bad enough that Michael uh, Oberdick, uh, owner and operator of Eye Outlet, an Ohio-based pre-owned iPhone store and repair shop, decided not to take a wait-and-see approach when Apple launched its new phones. We don't even do the uh, the iPhone 8 repairs this year on purpose, uh, Oberdick told me over the phone. I had a really good feeling that something like this was going to happen again, and he was right. With the iOS 11.3 update in March, the company has disabled touch functionality. And when you talk about right to repair... You can have all the right to repair you want. It doesn't stop them from doing something like this. So, pretty disgusting. Yeah, I just, I really hope the FTC gets involved and uh, finds Apple into the next century. That would be amazing. Well, as you may or may not know, computer hardware involves the use and production of lots and lots and lots of minerals that are, that are called rare earth minerals. Everything from neodymium hard drive magnets to you know, uh, exotic essentials that are sprinkled throughout any, any, any device, whether it's the iPhone or the special chips in the iPhone that make the touchscreen work or Tesla's you know, Tesla's literally everything. Well, Japan has announced that they have uh, uh, mapped a semi infinite trove of rare earth metals. Unfortunately, all of this is, uh, in ocean floor mud. It's pretty far down, but if we can get at it, this will supply the world's needs for certainly all of our lifetime. It sounds yeah. like Japan needs some freedom. <laughs> well, I think USA, USA. I think they've got a plan to get it out of there. It's valuable enough that they'll be able to get it out of there, and that's definitely good news for the electric car revolution. Because you know that was one of the things. 
It's like, do we have enough of all these resources to replace every internal combustion car with an electric car? And this will certainly be good news for that. Now, I was thinking that America had a huge trove of these rare earth metals as well. But the, the problem was mining them is so toxic and produces so many caustic byproducts that it's really hard to do in America, which is why China China does it. But then you read the stories about the rural Chinese villages where people you know, have horrible birth defects and there's just all kinds of just crazy levels of toxicity. What is this going to do to the ocean? Who it's cares? well, it's the cusp of the Godzilla. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. We're gonna unearth Godzilla along with the rare earth minerals. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so you're saying that Japan is going to start mining this to literally summon Godzilla? Yeah, or Mothra, or you know, <laughs> your giant monster of choice. I don't think Mothra lived under the sea, Krista. Where come did Mothra on. come from? Was he just in a cave? It's uh, been a while since I've seen some of those. I don't, I don't remember the origin of Mothra. Showed up one tell, day. Someone will tell us in the comments. I no remember, doubt. like uh, in the one movie, it was a. Uh, like there was some mysticism. There were the twins and it got weird. <laughs> you know what else is getting weird? If you're an infantryman, you're apparently using robots now. Robots are being used by soldiers uh, in breaching exercises. Well, this so. is the this is the engineer. So, the engineering corps who would normally have to go in before storming a complex and remove mines and debris and tank traps and fill in tank ditches and stuff or tank trenches. Well, now we got robots for that. <laughs> and the soldiers commented and were like, wow, this actually works, which is perhaps encouraging. And they also have drones that are watching this whole thing so that they can drive them remotely from behind the lines. And they have auto autonomous vehicles that lay down smoke and transport the robots. So it's like a whole little robot fleet that goes out <laughs> and takes care of these battlefields. A vape train. <laughs> Just a vape deploy train. I think that's, that's what they officially call it, is the vape train. The vape train. Uh, looks like, so this is a robot that's about to fetch a mortar or something? Yeah, it's like some kind of ID. <laughs> well, I guess that's good. We need robots doing that kind of stuff. We don't need to put people in danger. It's totally good. But how long until we get the anti-engineer robots? Uh, who go out and, and try sabotage to stop them. them. <laughs> Curse this inevitable <laughs> arms race of insanity. No. Artificial intelligence is also good at creating 3D models of a person now from just a few seconds of video. So there's a video demonstration of this um, on the uh, Science Mag website. And you should check that out because it really does, you know, from just a few seconds of video, it creates an okay relatively low res model. Yeah, if you can get a 360 degree video of yourself, it doesn't require that, but that's the best results. Then you could, the future of this is going to be, you know how you can put your face on the basketball players in like NBA 2K or whatever? Yeah. Do they still call it 2K? I guess we're still in the 2000. Uh, this will be your entire body with proper joint movement and all of that and your perfect dimensions in video games. Think about that. Think about GTA Online. This kind of, <laughs> this kind of reminds me of uh, like the Live Trace tool in Illustrator, where you get like you take like another image that's you know just a raster image, and then it converts it to a vector. Like it's not perfect, and you're gonna have to like fiddle fiddle with it yourself. But I mean, it's pretty good for you know a they'll, few seconds of video. They'll improve it. Apple did the an emoji thing, and Samsung one up them by doing providing this kind of thing where it's like you can emoji yourself with I guess a similar kind of technology, and I just. Nothing would weird me out more than like getting you know an angry emoji text from like my boss is like you did this update wrong. It's like oh why is this why 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 was this why like angry cartoon emoji from someone? I just this is yeah. I see, I think I don't think I'm gonna use it for that. I think it's gonna be like you no longer get get to pretend to be a female in PUBG. You have to <laughs> Everyone you. knows it's gonna be a real name policy for PUBG. Uh, people that identify differently are gonna have a real hard time. Well, they can identify whatever they want. You look how you look. Yeah. <laughs> a wanted man in China has been caught because of the facial recognition software that we've mentioned several times now on, on the news. And so there's a uh, this. It's come to fast company. It's hit mainstream. So the the normies are learning about the Chinese facial recognition. He was at a concert with fifty thousand other people. Picked him right out. They came in. Swiped him up. He was in the middle of a mosh pit. And they just <laughs> elbowed and made their way through. I can't see the Japanese people moshing. They're far too disciplined. The that. Chinese people? Oh, is it China? Yeah, oh, you've done it. You did it twice when we were talking about it, too. No. We've had oh, a trouble I. with countries this week. Well, the Chinese love to mosh. As we all know. <laughs> uh, machine learning. Machine learning applied to material science. This is always something 
that I'm interested in because I think that searching for chemical reactions that produce certain biological results and looking for chains of reactions and combinations of, of, of elements to produce the desired material. I think AI is going to make huge differences there, so I'm always keeping an eye out for stories about like that. And so artificial intelligence has accelerated the discovery of metallic glass. Transparent aluminum from Star Trek. So we're, we're finally going to have that because of machine learning. Woo! Transparent aluminum, all right, yeah. We, we did uh, the prescription drugs. They also did this. Yeah. So... This is really the same process. It's just you teach the AI what is going to react, what two things reacting together is going to be like, and then it extrapolates and it makes some good guesses. So instead of testing twenty thousand samples, you're testing a hundred. That's exciting. It's going to be a whole new world of material science. It's going to be the wild, wild west in terms of all sorts. We're gonna. It's going to be crazy stuff. We're going to be able to like three D print diamond and just crazy stuff like that. I don't that. remember that in the Will Smith movie. <laughs> The FDA has approved an AI-powered software to detect diabetic retinopathy. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Retinopathy? I'm not sure. Oh, retinopathy. Yeah. Anyway, retina. yeah. it's, a, it's a diabetic precursor that can be recognized in your eye. Although a human probably couldn't do it, but an AI certainly can. So they just scan your eye, run it through the AI, and you find out if you're diabetic. Woo! Seems good. The FDA has signed off on it, so... Yeah. They've been testing this for at least a year or two, I'd say. Now, that's, they don't make a concrete decision based on that. But if it comes back true, you get scheduled for a follow-up. So, <laughs> you know, they're still going to have a human make the decision, but chances are real good. <laughs> oh. Our next segment is news headline or name of an album. And it is China plants to grow flowers and silkworms on the dark side of the moon. What band? Dark side of the moon. Go. <laughs> <Joe. laughs> Um, Pink Floyd. Oh, oh good job. Wow. <laughs> Something that's not a Weird Al album. <laughs> I made an effort to be normal once. It didn't didn't work didn't out. Now, yeah. what classic movie is that supposed to be the unofficial soundtrack of? Um, I could tell you that. I watched that in college many times. Uh, that's The Wizard of Oz. Oh, The Wizard of Oz. Oh, but really? This, but this, yeah, supposedly you start it when the line roars like the second time. It does time, match up. It's very it's, weird. And it's perfectly matched to that. Wow. But that's not what we're covering here. We're talking about... <laughs> we're talking about China. We're talking about silkworms. And so basically they've built a little terrarium. The dark side of the moon, by the way, not actually dark. The sun hits it. And uh, they're going to send this up. And it's going to, you know, the, the silkworms are going to eat the flowers. And then they're going to poop. And the flowers are going to eat off that. There's a sealed amount of water in there and the sunlight. They expect this to tell them, can the silkworms gestate, pupate, is that what it's called? Yeah. In almost no gravity. And can they function or will they be little dead silkworms in space? <laughs> not, not quite the beautiful ecosystem they imagined when they sent it off. <laughs> We're going to bring life to the moon. It'll be great. Martian, Martian. Lunar soil is very caustic. It's very abrasive. It's very sharp. So if we could actually get something to grow there to just till the soil and grind it over like the wind and, you know, in a few hundred years, it might not be as caustic. Now, well, this is just a little glass bubble. But, you know, we were talking before, this could easily lead to Mothra. Easily. <laughs> easily. And we all know that Mothra could travel through space, so... <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. It was a it was a, a Chinese biology experiment, and in the 1960s, we wanted to nuke the moon as a show of power. So it was the nuke on the moon combined with the you know Chinese science experiment that produced. <laughs> it Mothra. was a dud nuke. Nuke, <laughs> nuke the moon. You know we don't need the tides. None of that. Not well, important. Well, it wasn't. It was. It was. It was not to destroy the moon. It yeah. was just that you could see the nuclear explosion on the surface of the and moon. And let everyone know. Right. Yeah, it's like this is this this US could be was you. Here. Yeah, it's like you need you need to fall in line. I'd be surprised if Russia doesn't do that. The way that well, anyway, that's a story for another time. <laughs> that's a good use of a nuke. <laughs> Army researchers conduct the first ever combustion experiment with X-rays, the most powerful X-ray on the planet, or so they claim. They're they're they're, they're looking at gas turbine. Uh, combustion with the x-ray. Yeah, I was excited when I saw that headline. I thought they were setting fire to things with x-ray. It sounds <laughs> very like, exciting. Wow. I didn't know that was even remotely possible. Well, it turns out it's not. <laughs> but inside of a turbine, and this is a helicopter propeller that they're looking at, because it's a combustion chamber, you know, it's it's got to be very robust materials, 
they've never been able to look inside of it and see exactly how the fuel reacts as it's in the combustion chamber. But they've come up with an x-ray that's so powerful, they can now look at it, which they, is kind of cool. They can look at the tiny drops of fuel as it combusts because aerosolizing or converting the fuel into tiny little drops helps efficiency. We know that from just experiments, but, but how? I'm sure a lot of scientists in the comments are going to tell us. Or argue about how it's done. Or either <laughs> one, you know, I don't know. <laughs> or complain about the audio. Uh, Eureka Alert had this one, this new and exciting article, a, a new qubit mechanism. This is uh, one of the building blocks of quantum computers. Uh, now it works without breaks. So we've got, like, current qubits basically will generate heat, and heat is the enemy of the superconducting nature of, you know, the material that's needed to actually do quantum computations. And so they've come up with a mechanism here which will fail at predictable intervals so it's not really that it's working without breaks, but they're able to control when the material stops becoming superconductive so that they can still do useful comp computations basically continuously with an array of these. These are superconducting nanowires. So normally you use the break and there's like the quantum tunneling through the breaks and that whole thing. But here they're messing with the electrical field to change the superconductive quality of the nanowires predictably. Yeah. And if you read this article, it starts to get real intense toward the end. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend to understand all of that, but seems exciting. I watched a whole like intro, like one of those uh, tutorial vids on YouTube that was like intro to quantum. People was like, this is interesting. And then like I was following it and following it. And then it just like reaches a point where just like a oh. snap. And then it's like, I don't understand what's going on anymore. I got as far as I could with my community extension courses. And uh, yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, if it leads to. Quantum computing, I mean, you know, think about the exciting things we can do with all that 3D modeling and facial recognition if we have quantum <laughs> computing. I mean, it's going to be... We can release Skyrim again. <laughs> <laughs> but Faster. you can be... All of your friends can be the characters in Skyrim. <laughs> I think that was... Uh, oh, uh, Black and White was one of the first games to do that. If you had certain email programs installed... Uh, when you were playing black and white, it would bring in contact names from your email as the villagers in the game. So you would have like little people that you knew and you could pick them up. And Would it pull in their name or their username? Their name. Oh. From email. <laughs> I was like Cambridge Analytica. Before it was cool. <laughs> Spooky. Oh, and news that's been reported everywhere. This one's from Engadget. Guinness, the Guinness Book of World Records, has stripped Billy, the King of Kong, Mitchell's world records. And so there's a, there's a documentary called The King of Kong. And this is the this was the world record holder, but there's uh, some evidence that he may have been cheating. I guess we've he also, talked about this before. He also held the Mrs. Pac-Man record, I think, too. He had a bunch of records, and uh, they discovered he was cheating. We did actually cover this before, but that was Twin Galaxies, so they're sort of like the classic arcade database people. But they Guinness used their records to give him the world record. <coughs> Excuse me, and. Uh, so Guinness has stripped him. Look at, I'll, I'll go back to that article real quick and look, let's look at his face. That's the face of a cheater. Yeah. <laughs> like that's... He does not look like, he, I would put him uh, not as bad as the Kansas swatter, but definitely an untrustworthy face. Yeah, I don't if he, like If he walked up to you at a bar and was like, hey, I have the high score on Miss Pac-Man, I'd be like, I don't believe you. <laughs> Who's going to have the ultimate bar story now? It's going to be, it's like, you know, What's your trouble, stranger? And it's like, I used to be the world's most amazing <laughs> comic player. I was an adventurer like you yeah. till they stripped my and The bartender record. just turns around and walks away. <laughs> uh, and, and speaking of things that people should be spending their time better doing better things than, NASA has shot human sperm into space. Yeah, so there's a new experiment. This is looking at uh, how, um, I guess, how virulent... Uh, sperm is in space. <laughs> Virulence. <laughs> Not virile. Although, considering the overpopulation problem, I would agree with your first... Uh, but yeah, like we talked about with the silkworms, the, they've actually done a lot of like rodents and stuff. They've had them on the space stations. Uh, copulation in space doesn't work too well. So they're a little concerned. Like, if we're going to go to Mars, are we going to be able to have kids on the way? 
The, uh, the article describes three stages of activation and in a low gravity environment, the first stage seems to operate okay, like in speaking about the mechanical parts of it, but the other two seem not to. But, you know, I think that like artificial gravity in space, I don't think is going to be a big deal, especially if we're going to have, uh, you know, like the Earth to Mars missions, because they'll be able to do it with just a rotating ring or something like that. And then all these problems sort of go away. I like that you just kind of like blow by like our, <laughs> we don't have it yet, but it's gonna happen eventually. No, no, we do. It's, you just it's just it's just a spinning ring, and so what you have like a a spinning ring spacecraft. It's not like uh, Star Trek artificial gravity. Yeah, but you have to have some sort of propellant. Yeah, that's well, constant. This is, it's not, There's it's some not problems, but think about this. So imagine last week. I don't know if we did the story, but remember they talked about the uh, the space hotel that they're building. It's oh, like yeah. two hundred seventy five thousand dollars to stay there. Imagine if you can't get pregnant in space. <laughs> that is going to be a huge boon to the space tourism dollar. Ooh, they're trying. Yeah. So you have a space brothel, you know? Can you, you still to... get STDs in space? Oh, well. I imagine that, that that mechanism still works. You That's probably... what NASA should be spending their money on. But you probably need to be screened for that before you get on a space flight, right? Yes, I would think. So, yeah. It's just it's free love on the space station, man. What it, it, I could just imagine in in like you know Houston or Cape Canaveral the Craigslist ads. It's like we are seeking you know a couple that has the. That's not a thing on Craigslist anymore. <laughs> uh, is it, it has, sex trafficking? It has to be if like you're going some sort of underground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a flyer. I feel like that you could probably get that. You know that would be a fair defense of that because that's that is research. You know how communicable are those STDs in zero gravity? That's a thing. A federal department has told a researcher that his document request will be ready in 80 years. Now, this was in Canada. This was not the U.S., but this is perhaps surprising because it was Canada. The uh, Library and Archives Canada said that it needed at minimum eight decades to review 780,000 records related to a, a mysterious RCMP investigation called Project Anecdote. Except ah. it wasn't their original thing. Like, it'll take us 800 years. 800, yeah. Well, I'm, they said that was a typo. I meant uh -huh. to read up on Project Anecdote. I wonder what kind of horrible thing that is. I, I didn't get time to do it, but yeah. I'm going to. Yeah, the uh, the article did not go into that mm. at all, which makes me think that it's one of those like, like you know, our version of MK Ultra, which we have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the stuff that we've come clean about on MK Ultra really makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. So is this something like that, or you know? And there's a lot more yeah. about MK Ultra that we don't know about. You have to wonder. Uh, they do point out that the life expectancy for a Canadian is 82 years. So <laughs> if as a two-year-old you make this request, you have some chance of seeing I've the seen results. <laughs> wow. Just seems like we could get that accelerated or something. I mean, I but know. perhaps more disturbing is that this investigation, which was closed 15, 000, or 15 years ago, has so many more records that they're going to take so much time to go through. Has a lot of records. Like... If that was something that wasn't that big a deal, that's a lot of records to keep about it. Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, it's the Mountie program. Information <laughs> about the Mountie program. How many times the horse has pooped or something. Uh, we all know about ransomware. I mean, hardly a week goes by and there's not a ransomware story. Well, this week's ransomware story is in the nonsense section. This ransomware encrypts all your stuff, but will decrypt your files if you play Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. PUBG. Yeah, this is, and they actually just give you the unlock key right there on the screen. It's, <laughs> it's. I guess it's just meant to be silly, but that seems like a weird thing to put any effort into at all. Well, it turns out if you rename Notepad.exe to TSL Game and just run that, it'll be like, oh yeah, you're playing. It's fine. Here's your key. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hackers have stolen a high roller casino's database through a thermometer in the fish tank lobby. Yeah, so they uh, they were able to get on the network by using an IoT thermometer and exfiltrate, exfiltrate data through the thermostat. Nice. This might be the best Internet of Things <laughs> you know, anti-IoT story we've ever done. Uh, because, I mean, you know, you're a casino. It makes sense that you have the nicest thermometer in your huge fish tank <laughs> those fish are probably worth like a hundred grand you think <laughs> yeah. is it a saltwater tank oh yeah, so yeah, i'm sure yeah. it's was that specified ultra in the luxurious I mean, look, look at look that at this. Yeah. oh those just, are definitely saltwater look how bright colored yeah that's incredible and then of course the thermostat 
you know, you need a thermostat. You got to keep people nice and comfortable while they're at those tables. <laughs> but uh, did it say how much they lost? I didn't see that in the article. Uh, it was uh, they, it was the database of high rollers. So this was the people like uh, who spend the most at oh. the. Uh, and those are people you don't want to piss off. No. So yeah, that's unfortunate for this. Uh, that was in London, by the way. You think it was in Vegas, but it wasn't. Goldman Sachs also this week was asking uh, their biotech uh, research thing: is cure is is curing patients really a sustainable business model? They were talking about gene therapy, and it's like, look, if we come up with a way to solve these diseases by directly editing genes, people aren't going to want to buy the drugs anymore. It was Hep C they cured, right? Well, there's a company called Gilead who has actually cured Hep C, and they use that as a bit, as a case study here. It was like, well, let's look at Gilead. <laughs> they made a ton of money right after they cured Hep C, but now they're not making as much. So <laughs> do we really want to cure diseases? I mean, long term, that doesn't help your business. And they actually, some soulless piece of shit at Goldman Sachs turned that into a report and released it to their customers. It's astonishing. <laughs> That's in the nonsense section, in case you were wondering, but... It's a, Jesus. That's like the darkest nonsense story. <laughs> Do you think they even it gets, for... It gets darker, the next one's Even darker. for a moment, did they ask themselves, like, should we really print this? <laughs> I, Is this something we... Yes. You think absolutely. the public will get a hold of this? They will, right? Yeah, Do the, you think maybe I'm a piece of shit for even thinking about this? <laughs> no. It's everyone else who's wrong. Uh, they do offer some you know ways to work around it, and they give you suggestions like only target diseases that have a huge amount of... Infected. Uh, yeah, like a, a lot of people suffer from that. So... And that's even worse. It's like, no, let's not go after the really horrible ones that are easy to cure. Let's focus on ones that we can make the most money. Well, if we're doing gene therapy, why, why, and you know, people aren't getting sick enough, why don't we do gene therapy on the viruses and make some super deadly viruses? I mean, it seems like problem solved. Well, well I could a tell, problem. I could totally see like two. It's it's a biotech company. It's two companies, but they're really owned by the same people, you know. And it's sort of like an arms race. <laughs> they're they're egging each other. It's on. like, well, you'll never get the flu again, but you can get flu X, That's, and it's way worse. That that in in the computer industry that actually happened at Apple with Steve Jobs because Steve Jobs had the Mac people fighting against the Apple people, and so I could see like the Steve Jobs of you know the pharmaceutical industry being like, all right, we. You guys are racing to cure all the horrible diseases, and this team is racing to beef up those horrible diseases so they're they're you know even more likely to infect most of the population. Well, it's long been, you know, they've accused the antivirus world from doing that. You get like an email, like you know, a friendly office like competition. Whoever wins gets a cake in the conference room. <laughs> if the death if the death toll this year is above this number, then. Team A is going to go on the retreat. But if it's below this number, Team B goes on the retreat. <laughs> it's like, well, I think Bob in the mailroom is going to get a promotion this year. He found the gene that literally makes you bleed from your eyes. <laughs> and they're going to incorporate that into Flu 2.0 that they're going to be releasing later this year. They're playing year. Plague Inc. <laughs> yeah. They're playing live Plague Inc. Yeah, that kind of is, except they're making money while they're doing it. <laughs> Our next story from Thompson Reuters is really interesting. Dark. Uh, yeah, Amazon has pulled child sex dolls after criticism from a UK watchdog. So Amazon is sort of saying, "Was that wrong? Should we not have done that? You could you could buy you could buy <laughs> sex dolls to look like children." That the, it's astonishing that because you, you you think okay, they slipped through the cracks, right? Amazon's this monolithic company, but somewhere somebody in a warehouse picked up a child <laughs> sex doll. And put it in a box, and no alarm bells went off anywhere. Here's like, three cans of beanie when you <laughs> Oh, customers who bought this also bought, you know. Yeah. God, I would love to, I don't know if, well, I don't know if I would love to see it, but it would certainly be interesting. I wonder, now, I wonder if we can abuse the Alexa always listening speaker to get it to order that instead of gummy bears. Oh, no. No, don't make people stuff order. Uh, now, this is in London, so it turns out. I think we did a story on this once before because it was so ridiculous that somebody got arrested for importing a child sex doll in London. But but the rule is, the law is, you can't import them, but you can make your own and you can buy domestic-made ones. 
<laughs> so it wasn't to illegal. Support the UK economy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, buy local, right? I, Mom and pop. Theoretically, because those are tracked, I guess you have to. Read, is it like a serial number? I, is it? I don't know. I don't know if I want to know. Well, and it's crazy because we were talking on the stream. There's like some sort of legislation that's about to go through in London. That's like you can't have a knife, but you can buy a child sex doll as long as it's local. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, it's uh, it's a shocking that Amazon ever offered those, but uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, also coming to us from uh, this, this is the Metro News, so I guess not really. But read this headline because it's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, I have to I have to read this. Man team killed and virtually teabagged female journalist during shocking in game rampage. Rampage. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but when uh, you read this, the guy it was actually the guy. He, they were demonstrating a game for a journalist, and the journalist was playing. But the guy that did the teabagging said that he thought he was killing the other game developer that was in the game and not the journalist. Well, I think he shouldn't have to explain it. Well, I think the other, like, she walked up and took over the computer of the other developer who's like, Here, you try it out. And then the other guy was not in the room with him, uh-huh. he was somewhere else. And he was like, Oh, hey, there's Bob. Watch, I'm going to kill him and teabag him. <laughs> and it was this fem- feminine blog or feminist blogger, and oh, she yeah. was quite outraged. I, uh, I have no issue with teabagging. I, <laughs> oh, we know. I, I, I will teabag others. I will teabag my own teammates if they get slept. Uh, what did you say? You don't te- you teabag everybody? No, I said I do. Oh, okay. Like yeah. if it's my own teammate, even. <laughs> like I will why not but yeah this uh, this young lady walked away in disgust and said this is why I don't play these games I, I don't it just it's... Uh, of all the things like that are reportable or just horrible and mean in video games teabagging is just so low on the tier of stuff yeah <laughs> like they, uh, they crouched on your body get I have, over it I have never been teabagging in a video game and like actually gotten angry it's always funny but yeah it never it's so stopped. stupid yeah it's, it's the most ridiculous thing ever it also puts you at a disadvantage like you're literally going out of your way to put yourself at a disadvantage and we should also just point, to gloat. point out for anybody that maybe doesn't play video games I mean I can't believe I'm pointing this out but in, it, you, there's not actually a teabag button in games it's just crouch it's you're just, literally the, just crouching on the, the body the teabagging is implied but there could be a teabagging button <laughs> if you go to level <laughs> the one store that level, level one text we <laughs> literally have a teabag button one of the best quotes from this article is a guy who just decided to white knight in here I don't know Mike Futter I don't know who he is Futter. but he tweeted <laughs> friendly tip for devs showcasing games don't intentionally team kill a journalist and then teabag them especially if she's a woman I, I mean, Krista, how does that make you feel that he had to qualify that? I, I often, when I die in PUBG, if it was a good fight, I will yell over team chat, teabag me, <laughs> as a way of honoring my corpse. Uh, this, I like the article also points out that tells you what teabagging is. It's, <laughs> no, no monetization, no! <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never really read it as this. But. That's hyperlinked, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> what is I don't that? know where that goes. I'm <laughs> not clicking Probably on that. Probably Urban Dictionary. I don't, don't want to go there. Uh, no, we're not, we're not going there. We're not. You, you can go to the article in the one tab and then go there if you want, and that's fine. It's technically explicit, except it's not really. It's just crouching. Yeah, it's literally just crouching. It's the implication. It seems like there would be a lot more important things you could get worked up about other than that. But if you run a feminist blog, that's a lot of free content. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of clicks. And people who don't understand that you're literally just crouching on them, they'll be like, I can't believe they put such a vulgar thing in a game. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I thought it would be important to qualify that, because we've yeah. always got at least five or six comments like that, where it's just all of that just right over. So, uh, Some people are never going to get it, and I don't think we should waste time. We shouldn't. It's, it's it's like the whole no child left behind thing. Some people you just leave them behind. Yeah. yeah. Some commenters. Just it's have to it's got to go that way. Yeah, that's enough nonsense from level one this week. But you should definitely check out the level one store where you can actually buy a tea bag keycap, which is really exciting. And that was her idea. Because I'm a horrible person. I also <laughs> like to spray on my opponent's bodies, even games that allow spraying. <laughs> I'm horrible. (laughs) We'll see you next time. Bye.